Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 giant prehistoric creatures you will be glad went extinct. I know, odd title, but trust me, these guys are scary. Kicking off the list at number 10, Arctidus Simus. Lions, tigers, and Arctidus Simus, oh my. This one's really scary. Also known as the giant short-faced bear, the Arctidus Simus went extinct only a mere 11,000 years ago. Yeah, it was once the fastest running bear that ever existed. So already, we have trouble. That's a terrifying fact. Its legs were much longer than today's bears. These were like lanky, fast bears. If the giant short-faced bear stood up on its hind legs, it would be around 13 feet tall. This thing was a beast. Today's bears also have different shaped toes. Today they have pigeon toes, more or less, but back then these guys had straight, forward-facing feet. So they were athletes, pretty much. Giant athletes with quick feet. Paleobiologists conclude that short-faced bears ate only meat. And given the fact that it was 11,000 years ago, I feel very badly for humans that found it. Well, with its powerful nose, realistically it would have found them. Yeah, the giant short-faced bear, I'm gonna say its full name every time also. I'm, I'm not just gonna say this bear, I'm gonna say the giant short-faced bear every time. The giant short-faced bear needed around 35 pounds of meat every day to survive. That's, that's, that's a lot of food, that's a lot of porridge. Yeah, I hope my porridge isn't too hot. Please God, don't let him burn his bare lips on my porridge, he's gonna eat me. These, these things are scary, honestly, like, they're always like scary photos, like drawings of it too. Well, obviously, there's no photos. Number nine, Spinosaurus. Ah uh, yes, another Jurassic Park star, and rightfully so. Look at this thing. The largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time. Even bigger than a T-Rex. Can you imagine that? 93 million years ago, they stopped terrorizing the lands of what is now Egypt and Morocco. And if you didn't already guess, its name translates to spine lizard, hence the spine stuff. And that spine was quite long. It was its main feature, you know? The Spinosaurus would measure up to 60 feet long, and aside for its back, one of the most notable features is its six foot long head. It's got a massive head, man. Its mouth was similar to a crocodile's with straight, sharp teeth, not curved teeth. Straight, like a vampire. <laughs> These straight teeth could stab right through anything, any fish, just a big skewer for a tooth, no problem. Paleontologists from the University of Pennsylvania believe that this guy used to swim as well. Nice, even scarier. Because where the first Spinosaurus fossils were found, well that used to be by Haria Oasis in Egypt, which was a massive swamp. Water or land, I want nothing to do with this guy. Next, number eight, Mega Piranha. Don't have to say much about this one. What if I just said Mega Piranha and then it was just the next point? You're like, oh, fair. These things, for starters, were much bigger than today's piranhas, obviously, hence their name. They came in at around one meter long. They ruled the waters around Argentina around six million years ago, so skinny dipping probably wasn't a thing. I hope not. Its bite force was 50 times its own weight, and like I said earlier, mega piranha, bigger. This thing was huge, it was bigger, it was badder, it was weightier, had more huh to it. Mega piranha would be around 30 pounds on average. Its bite can outchop megalodon any day, any Tuesday. Even today, the word piranha makes people scared, makes people anxious. As I was writing this, I was like, oh. I wasn't looking. Because our modern day black piranha, although sure it's only, you know, two pounds, its razor sharp teeth can still take a chunk out of you. Still quite dangerous. Yeah, but they didn't mention any of that in 3D piranha double D part three or whatever we're watching now. These things are scary. Number seven, Helicoprion. Perhaps one of the weirdest sea creatures to ever exist. 250 million years ago, that is. This thing looks like a shark, but scientists now know that it was related to chimeras, a fish that separated from the shark family 400 million years ago. Yeah, they were like, I don't like this family. I got some things going on in my mouth. See you later. Good. The 25 foot long fish was first discovered by Andrei Zarpinsky in Russia back in 1889. He got the name Helicoprion because it translates to spiral saw. Yeah in their mouth, horrible. This guy found teeth fossilized in a spiral formation. What a find, he must have been scratching his head for months. Paleontologists all agree today that this was not part of a fin, it wasn't a wacky spinal cord, this guy wasn't all, you know, all goofed up, but rather, it was its teeth. It was teeth coiled up, attached to the lower jaw of the fish, and its grasp was the same power roughly to that of a crocodile, yeah. That's the worst thing I could imagine. So new teeth would form, and in turn these spirals would get longer and curlier. Adult fish would have four full rotations in their mouths. Rotations of teeth, that's horrible. Four rows of teeth, can you imagine? I thought wisdom teeth sucked. Ugh. Number six, Leopluridon. Translating to smooth-sided teeth, nice, sounds a little fun, dare I say. The Leopluridon was anything but a smooth sailor. It was a massive marine reptile from the Mesozoic era, first discovered in the 1800s. It was excavated in France back in 1873, all they got was three teeth 
and that was enough. But when it was featured in 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs, the BBC series, it was shown as this massive 80 foot long pliosaur. But they were basing that size off of its skull, which we now know is just much larger than the rest of its body. We got too excited. The thing's literally a bobblehead of a dinosaur, and we're like, yeah, it was bigger, maybe, I don't know. Pliosaurs were the apex predators in Europe. 160 million years ago, most of it was covered in shallow water, so this guy would use its four flipper feet to stalk its prey. And researchers believe its snout was a key asset in hunting. He would just, he would just sniff for you. They didn't have any gills, so they did need to come up for air every now and then. Again, imagine this big head just appearing out of nowhere and just sniffing you. Going back in. That's Loch Ness Monster for sure. Number five, Megalodon. Of course we have to mention him. Louis Agassiz discovered the Megalodon shark for the first time back in 1843. Yes, the Megalodon was once very real. Louis was a Swiss born American naturalist and geologist. He discovered some amazing details around glacier activity and extinct fish. Historically, this guy is an OG. He's made quite the impact. He's brilliant. But one of those extinct fish he discovered back in the mid 1800s was the Meg, AKA the tooth shark. This was long before Jason stayed was born, so we had no idea what to do with this guy. Megalodons could be found pretty much everywhere in the world except for Antarctica. It favored warm oceans, but similarly to a great white shark, it generates heat when it moves, so the Meg could literally have survived in most places on Earth. It's that big, it would just warm itself up. The largest recorded megalodon came in at 59 feet, around the same length as a bowling alley. A bowling alley with seven foot wide jaws and five rows of razor sharp teeth. Nice. Nope. Number four, the last Mosaurus. First discovered in 1868, a military doctor in Kansas found this creature's fossil, passed it along to American paleontologist Edward Cope, who named the plesiosaur. Its neck contained 71 vertebrae. I think I have like 56, I'm pretty close. Not, not as long, but definitely in the same family, for sure as, as this guy. It was super long, which came in handy during those deep dinner dives. When I say long, the Elasmosaurus was around 50 feet in length, so it didn't need to go that close to the surface to get air. He just kind of leaned back and he was good. There's people out there that believe the Loch Ness Monster is just one of these things still swimming around. Honestly, as far as things go, that's probably the best guess. It's probably some sort of version of that, if it exists. Its teeth were sharp enough to eat anything that could fit into its mouth. And just two years ago, scientists have unearthed the largest known Elasmosaurus. This, this thing has been sitting there since the Cretaceous period waiting for us and I'll be honest I sure hope we don't find any more because one water dragon is enough for me I believe great stop number three dire wolves we'll go a little nicer before we get to our last haunting too if you're from South Westeros this one might hit close to home around 10,000 years ago pretty recently dire wolves were still a thing they were pretty common and if you watch Game of Thrones you're probably nodding your head right now it's pretty fun right you're getting you're getting hyped or you're getting tissues, either way, spoilers. Canis dyrus, AKA dire wolves, these beasts were a lot bigger than our average gray wolf. It wasn't like a mega wolf with three heads or anything, but it still did weigh a lot more. It was eating good as well. Their jaws were much stronger back in the day, so they could chomp their way through pretty much anyone and anything. Believe it or not, dire wolves would actually hunt down and eat horses. Yeah, after studying their teeth, that was their go-to snack, but they were always easy to catch, I guess, if you're a, Wolf, they're no problem. Fast versus fast, I would hate to see that. That'd be so scary. Currently, if you're in the market for seeing 400 dire wolf skulls yourself, weird, but here you go. You gotta head to the Page Museum in Southern California. They found hundreds of thousands of skulls in tar pits. So, if you don't believe in these things, here you go, history. To thousands of skulls, ought to change your mind. Number two, a T-Rex. Tiny arms, massive head, loud scream. Yeah, we've all seen Jurassic Park, or at least one of the six movies they have now. And in real life, T-Rexes were probably a lot worse, to be honest. Around 70 million years ago, this big fella would roam what is now North America. But on average, it would be 20 feet tall, eight tons, stretched to haunting 40 feet long. And yeah, it had tiny arms, and we can roast them for that, sure. But they clearly didn't need them now, did they? No, they're old English, buddy. They would just headbutt anything. Look at these things. Its jaws are, of course, the main bread and butter here. 50 to 60 razor sharp serrated teeth around nine inches long would definitely help it digest 500 pounds of meat in one serving. Henry Fairfield Osborne, the president of the American Museum of Natural History, named the behemoth back in 1905. The name Tyrannosaurus rex comes from the Greek and Latin words, meaning tyrant lizard king. Yep, I'd say he nailed it. Pr pretty good. Godzilla has a nice ring, but tyrant lizard king? That's pretty groovy. That's way better. I'm gonna change my Xbox name to that. Tyrant Lizard King 69. 
Number one, Carno Taurus. Okay, remember that animated Disney movie just called Dinosaur? That movie that had this guy as the main villain? Yeah, that was way too scary for kids. I'm 27 now, I'll say it with full confidence. That scene was too scary. Cried in the theaters, I remember it. I still remember it. That and Ice Age, weirdly got me, I don't know. Carno Taurus, they roamed the Earth 69 million years ago. They were around the same size as a T-Rex, they were around 29 feet long, but they're nicknamed meat-eating bulls, so they were scarier. They would run at around 25 miles an hour. They're one of the fastest and largest moving theropods to ever live, ever, and its arms were even smaller than a T-Rex. But again, before you laugh, before you go, ha ha, little arm guy, that didn't matter for the meat-eating bull, because this guy has horns, just like the devil. Yeah, you were gonna say the devil, yeah, he's Oddly similar. The red skin, it's the whole shebang. The Carnotaurus was discovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in Argentina. They've only discovered one skeleton of these things, so hopefully there weren't too many of these sprinting around. Hopefully, but again, as that movie depicted, it was a horrible time to live. Thanks, Disney. All their dinosaur movies, eh? They're really nice now. The dinosaur movies are nice. Back in the day, we had this guy as a villain. Yeah, we didn't have Arlo, the good dinosaur. Now I'm upset. We had scary movies growing up. All right, those are the top 10 giant prehistoric creatures. You were definitely glad when extinct. I'm sure glad these things aren't roaming around anymore. If you want a part two, yeah, I love dinosaurs as well. Let's dive in any day. I'm Taylor McWaters. We'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Bye. <laughs> Big Friday. Went from tombs to prehistoric creatures. Never know what to expect in this channel. To sign in, I'm like, okay, we're going back to the, back millions of years ago. Here we go. Also known as the giant short, the f also known as the giant short, giant short face bear. Why can I say that? It's like a f I always tongue twist myself. Li Leoploridon. Half these sound like magic spells, man. Oh, I brought coffee in, yes. Not coconut water this time. I've learned my lesson since. If you're gonna put it down, you're like, I nah, just want more, just one more. I'm like, that was too good. Eight minutes, 20, we're f rolling through this. Number 